Okay. Let's call the meeting. Um, uh, Mr. Kroc is still recovering from a back injury, so he will hopefully join us at our next meeting, but we'll have to soldier on without him. So, I will entertain a motion to adopt minutes of April 16th, uh, 2018, uh, as amended. Uh, I so move, assuming that the spelling of moocher is changed. Well, I think it is. I think it is. Um, not on the draft I saw. Two small changes. One was, I don't think it was Senator Purdue, I think it was Sonny Purdue. Uh, yeah, yeah, Secretary Senator Purdue. Right, but I wasn't, I was naming it for his first name. You were given him a higher title. Uh, apparently, yeah, apparently I promoted him, but I'll amend nice. that as well. I'll demote him as well. <laughs> and, and the work on, um, Grinnell Circle was actually Glen Drive. I appreciate that. Okay. So we have a motion. I'll second. Uh, may we uh, vote, please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I now entertain a motion to approve payment of the bills in the amount of $29,355.26 for open down general fund $3,028.91. Car fund $14,363.48. Cemetery 499.98, EMS billing 586565, road bridge um, 3059.74, and capital project 2587.50. Is there a motion? I right, so move. Uh, there's a motion now. Second, is there any further discussion regarding, regarding payment of those accounts? Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Meacher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Uh, let's take just a second here before we... We don't want to I thought you were wandering back at the Walk in. Hi! Timing is impeccable. Just for the, we had an auction last winter. Yes, we did. And it was a big deal. Um, you guys remember, and Chris was certainly very helpful. He pulled out all the Whitehall veterans there. Um, yeah, we did. It was just great. It was, week. It was great. It was really good. Um, and I, I think we did put a really good effort together to you know try to preserve as much of that farm as we could. Um, it was... Uh, a month's notice that we had. Um, we hoped we've been in touch with Matt Arnovitz for a long time, and um, he expressed, I think, sincerely a hope to protect the creek at least. Uh, that family is in the development business, and so um, they evidently didn't really see a way to do that in a way that would involve conservation. So it went to auction in uh, nine pieces. Um, and uh, 270 acres, just about, close mm -hmm. to. So, uh, as we basically kind of followed the Whitehall playbook in terms of relating to landowners or, or to just potential conservation buyers who might want to preserve the land if they got it. And uh, we uh, got a lot of interest. Uh, did a variety of things to, uh, you know, hold open houses, uh, provide kind of bidder education for people who might be interested in bidding, um, and just got a really great outpouring of support. Actually, uh, we got quite a few contributions to go, you know, to help mm -hmm. winning bidders mm -hmm. who would preserve the land. Um, as it turned out, uh, two bidders got um, most of the, the agricultural land. Uh, community Solutions got the land that they're now working on some pretty extensive uh, kind of um, restoration on in terms of ag and stream mm -hmm. restoration. Um, and then uh, the Jones, uh, Matt and Julie Jones family got the eastern 80 acres, which is probably the, the best farmland actually in terms of 
better drain, better soils, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, they um, have been hoping to invest in farmland for quite a while, and so they actually didn't want to get uh, too far down the road in terms of a, um, an easement, easement uh, agreement. Mm -hmm. They didn't really need to do that in order to be able to secure that land. But with Community Solutions, it was really helpful to be able to have the, um, I think it was, I say twelve hundred, about fourteen hundred dollars an acre, about one hundred twelve thousand dollars to to um, work with, and so we have basically an agreement that's in place that uh, is ultimately going to lead to preserving at least eighty acres of land that would include the stream restoration area um, that Nature Conservancy is helping to helping to renovate or to actually restore is a better word. <laughs> Uh, and, and really restore it, I, it, definitely they're trying to go back to where the water flowed or would have flowed in the past. And so it's a really fascinating process. Um, the whole experience really left me and I think the Land Trust Board feeling like, wow, the people still care about this green belt? We you know we've heard about it a long time. This is kind of the classic um, outline of the green belt around Yellow Springs with uh, the, the Yellow Springs Creek to the, to the east and the Jacoby Creek to the west. Uh, the, on this um, map, which I have some copies of for you guys, um, you could, the green properties are the ones that have a permanent conservation easement on them. Mm -hmm. uh, the blue properties are properties that were uh, designated to be a part of the country common. So that's since really the 1960s. Um, people hoped to be able to buffer the plan. Um, oh yeah, let's get those memes back together. The again. state <laughs> nature, <laughs> nature oh. areas and state park. Um, and then uh, on the west is really where we have the, the biggest holes, actually. Uh, the yellow property uh, on this map is, I, I'm sorry, I thought I had the same map that I was giving you, but it's a little bit different. But on my big map, the yellow property is the RNS property. Mm -hmm. And um, the village of Yellow Springs has stayed pretty consistent about their green belt vision, which the township, I think, has generally been supportive of. Mm -hmm. um, you will recall when the township was putting funding into farmland preservation, the priorities were a little different. Mm -hmm. um, the village more kind of on the western edge, uh, the township more towards the east. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so we did do some nice uh, projects in that direction for sure, which I hope you know over time we'll be able to to continue to to work to preserve. Um, but this this area does seem to be continuing. Uh, as a high priority area for the village. I'm going to meet with them in a couple of weeks and kind of reaffirm those priorities for them. Um, we, uh, because of the enthusiasm around preserving the land, um, when it went to auction, we applied for a five-year regional conservation partnership. Um, this is something that was new with the last farm bill, which is going to run out soon. Um, hopefully it will be renewed soon, kind of hard to tell. Could be a year at a time mm -hmm. extension kind of situation. But at any rate, within the Farm Bill, um, this regional partnership program and the Ag Easement uh, program in general are very popular parts of the Farm Bill, it seems. Good bipartisan support for them. Um, and in fact, we have received an award. We are finalizing the agreement for that, that partnership. Uh, and we hope to have that relatively soon. Um, the, the, let me just say that the designated area uh, does indeed mimic the longed for Jacoby Green Belt, but also expands basically throughout the township. Um, so there's gonna be some really good opportunities for both preservation and for conservation mm -hmm. practices. So this map is on the, the back of the the uh, hand that I sit on ground. Mm -hmm. um, so what this regional partnership does is gives us uh, a designated pot of federal funds 
match with some uh, state and local monies that our local and state partners wrote letters of commitment uh, to, um, to, to commit, to say we, you know, we really want to work on this project, we think it's worthwhile, uh, we still have to go through their application processes, uh, that, that there's no doubt about that, but um, they felt confident that our priorities were really compatible with, with theirs. So how many partners, formal partners were in the We have, um, they're listed, and so it's 12. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice group. Um, and it's a variety of people, include Central State, which is now an land grant institution. Um, I'm pretty excited about a chance to work with them. Uh, as you guys probably know, they've already had a uh, water engineering program for quite a while. It actually trains a lot of people that go out and work in certain water districts all over the state and all over the country. Um, so adding the hack component to that makes a lot of sense um, because the soil and water uh, uh, issues are you know, so intertwined. Um, it, it, it's kind of exciting. They've hired some new faculty uh, who are um, planning to, to work with us and Xylem mm -hmm. and the Yale School District on water testing and there's a number of researchers in the area who hopefully are going to be able to use the information that we're able to, to derive. In the some, some of the news releases threw out large amounts of money. <laughs> and is, is that pretty big. dependable or is that part of this annual renewal? Um, the farm bill. It, it's the the answer is it's very hard for the federal government to undo that award. Okay. Um, so it's a couple million. It, it would be well the federal money is eight hundred thousand for agricultural easements. That's that's the farm bill program. Uh, almost. It, did I say I didn't say nothing? Eight hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> eight hundred thousand. 400000 for uh, installing conservation practices on the properties. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, called the Environmental Quality Improvement Program uh, the, within the Farm Bill. Um, this is, in a lot of ways, maybe the, even the most exciting part of this whole thing to me. Uh, we have a lot of, of not, not entirely, but we have a lot of non-farmer landowners in Miami Township. Yeah. And those folks generally don't go to the Farm Services Administration office. They're farmers that, you know, so generally their farmer is the person that's most familiar with what's available through the farm bill. So the equip program has been available for many years, but um, it's been very hard to get access to. So first of all, having a captive pot of money for this small of ge geography is just quite unusual. And the fact that we're going to be able to reach out to landowners within this area um, with some information that they probably haven't heard before or certainly are unlikely to have understood in the past uh, is pretty exciting. And so all of the different conservation practices that would minimize soil erosion, improve soil quality, improve water quality uh, are, are on the table for landowners to apply for. So we're kind of joined at the hip with the Soil and Water District. On, on the put this in perspective, you just said you've committed 112000 or something for this community solutions at 80 acres. This is eight times that. And beyond that, the local partners have said they will make available more than two million to go with the federal so, funds if the properties for which landowners are interested in applying and qualify. Um, there would be properties. We could spend all that money. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, we absolutely could spend all that money on the township. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends on what landowners are interested in doing. Um, so one of the first things that we're going to be doing is uh, September 29th, we've got the Bryan Center Reserve for a landowner resource fair. And so what we'll have uh, available for them is a series of speakers about 
some of the resources that are available to them. Um, you know, I'm hoping to especially get people who are very uh, uh, dynamic about explaining the equip programs. We have a lot of people who are supporters of the land trust, residents in the area that really are very interested in doing conservation, better conservation, on their properties, but really have not had a lot of information about tools to do that. So we'll try to just have our best, you know, um, diamond pony show, really, you know, with, with photos illustrating what some of those best practices are. Uh, we'll do some demonstrations, probably some visits to, to different farms that have implemented some of those practices. Over the summer and fall, in particular this, this year, uh, leading up to the application period that would open up after the new federal fiscal year. So we would start actually sitting down with people and scoring them for potential applications after October. And we would try to wrap up that application period both for the equipment practices and for uh, the ag easement monies uh, at pretty early in 2019. And we have to kind of play that out with the Soil and Water District. They obviously are still going to be running all their regular programs. Um, and so they'll be making applications for other, other places in uh, parts of Green County. Uh, but it's been really great to work with them. Um, you guys probably were tracking, I know Donna was at some of it, maybe Chris was too, at the uh, Conservation 2.0, Conservation Funding 2.0 conference we did back uh, in March at the, at the college. Uh, the colleges are partners, they you know, donate space, and um, we uh, had um, some really good information that's kind of new, I think, to most of us in this area about uh, potential funding sources, both things that we do have in play, like the Nature Conservancy's Stream Restoration Program, but also things we've really never worked with before. The Conservation Fund, the national organization, has uh, loans money mm -hmm. uh, in order for people to, uh, organizations, to be able to uh, get control of land. Um, for example, when it comes to auction, it, it would have been fairly difficult in the time period that we were working. Mm -hmm. like but with a little bit more lead, uh, there is that potential. Mm -hmm. um, so it was you know, very helpful uh, information, I think, for us. Very uh, exciting, followed by a day focused on soil improvement. You know, with Community Solutions is the lead on that. Um, so we got a, a lot of good information um, that I think will will be helpful to us. Um, we'll hope to get the money committed early. What we really like to do is get awards lined up as much as we can in 2019 and 2020. And what we have the flexibility to do with the federal money is to um, actually tailor their scoring system mm -hmm. and the timing of when applications are due. Um, to, to work for these priorities. So we, these really would be the, the, the priority properties. We're going to be messing a lot with that, really, um, you know, this summer with our federal partners and soil and water partners um, to try to figure out, you know, knowing that it's totally a, you know, voluntary decision whether people are interested in this or not. But uh, we want to be able to do outreach with confidence, you know, that this is, you, you know, you, you are in a priority area, mm -hmm. you know, so we definitely look like to, <coughs> to talk to you about the what the priority areas are. are the red? Highest priority of so far is the red. But anything in this larger area might be mm -hmm. qualified. And the well field area is something that the village has elevated and, and de elevated over time mm -hmm. as a priority, but it's come to the surface recently. And so that's one of the things that I'll definitely want to talk to them about in, in a couple weeks when I'm visiting with them. Uh, because that, it's kind of up to them. Um, just to say, and I think you guys are familiar enough with this to remember, um, when we have a small property, it could be critical in terms of the watershed or, or actually the, the creek itself, mm -hmm. but it um, is 
difficult to, to do an easement cost effectively. The costs that go into doing an easement, you, you got to do an appraisal, you got to get title work, you know. Um, we, we have to try to pay a, a little, anyhow, for our staff time and for a stewardship payment to be able to watch over that land over time. And so if you're talking about a 20 or 30 acre property or less, a lot of times, it's very hard to, uh, even if you have funding sources, to pay a landowner a thousand acres, you know, fifteen hundred dollars an acre. Mm -hmm. If your costs are going to be in the neighborhood of fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars, um, it's that's a pretty hard call to make. I mean, you're not making it on on a basis of the money that's mm -hmm. going to come into you. You've so, always had to fight that, though. I mean, that's not it's you. true. It's true. Mm -hmm. the, and just to say, the village again, if they because they do have money, if all they've committed two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars of green space monies. If they want to make that um, well head area a priority, they could potentially pay for costs mm -hmm. um, out of that, mm -hmm. you know, as well as potentially easement dollars. And so we'll just, you know, have to, to see if, if that's something they want to do. Um, so that's kind of the that's the timeline. There's um, the variety of partners is really interesting. The funding partners. Uh, we've got Water Resource Restoration Sponsorship Program, which is what we use for the riparian areas in the Glen. Mm -hmm. And um, that, is, is, that is money that's kind of allergic to farming. I mean, it's really only for, you know, stream corridors mm -hmm. and stream side forest and, and drainage, you know, significant kind of drainage areas that you really don't want to do agriculture in. But we have some tremendous uh, riparian corridor uh, along Jacoby Creek, for sure. Great streamside forest that that money could work for if, if the landowners are interested. And everybody, you know, Clean Ohio, both the open space and the agricultural components are participating in it. And the focus is in state government is so much on water quality that, you know, they, they, they really find this compelling. You, you may not, or you may not even realize, but at the Sunny Purdue event, that is, was a, was a firehouse event. He was here. There was former state rep Dave Hall, who <coughs> was a Clean Ohio pusher, and then in walked uh, Senator Bob Peterson, who's currently oh. head of the Senate Ag Committee. Uh, it was like a reunion, <laughs> Clean Ohio reunion, but that. That's kind of irrelevant. Did you have enough donuts for that reunion? <coughs> it was okay. very well done. <laughs> <laughs> you, have enough donuts. So, you don't want to run out of the donuts or no. coffee. How many, <laughs> well, yeah, how many priority landowners are in this red? Um, there's a lot of There's <laughs> no, I, I would say there's like eight or nine in that area. We um, have got. Um, you know, obviously, um, it, it's, it, they may be interested or not be interested, mm -hmm. right. you know, we just we don't exactly know about that, but, but it, because it's available basically in the bigger area, um, we plan to spend the money. So in the whole township, how many? Ten farms. Is farms. Right. Ten is what we're talking about. Okay, but I mean, quite apart from this grant, how many farms? How many places get yeah. CAUV tax? Oh uh, well, let, okay, let me just try to help limit the confusion, but explain why it's confusing. Farms are not the same as properties. Okay, C -A -U -V a farmer tax exempt status. Yes. That information is available, but you would get acres or number of parcels. Mm -hmm. But you, but it wouldn't begin to tell you how many different farms there are. Okay, I, okay. I, I think there's help me out though. With that. I don't really care. Or where, what, what information are you after? Um, how many? You know, if you're sending out a mailing or invitations, what? How many? So I guess I am talking about owners. Well, I, I would say there's forty or so because we have been working on our database, mm -hmm. and I would say there's forty or so. Uh, Properties which might be multiple parcels, you know, owned by one mm -hmm. landowner, and that is generally our our hope is to try to protect, you know, all of that contiguous land. 
um, who look like um, it's enough man, you know, to, to be able to make the, the so, funding sources. So you're saying that rough, very roughly, there are about 40 farm owners mm -hmm. uh, and that this money is primarily for active agriculture, although some of it is, is you, you said, sort of farm avoidant. Uh, yeah, so the, which, cons the which, riparian corridors or whatever it might. Yeah. And the thing that I think again is appealing to our partners about that, including the Ohio Department of Agriculture and you know USDA, is that um, that there are some lands that should stay out of agriculture or should be retired permanently. And you're familiar with the crop reserve or the conservation reserve program. I mean, that's always time limited and. It's at least some Congress people are very irked by that. You know, it's like it's this important to put all this money in it, but then it goes away. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. But it it could be um, it could provide some great demonstrations for our whole service area, really and beyond. And just to say, with community solutions, um, there there's no doubt. I think that was a real strength in our proposal is that we they're a partner and that they are very willing to share everything, you know, in terms of uh, consultation, people coming in, sharing demonstration uh, visits and events and that kind of thing. Um, and that's, I, I say sometimes 20 miles or 20 minutes away is kind of the limit of people's knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, if it gets too far away, it's like, well, that might not make sense because that's a whole different county, you know? And, but if you, you know, either if you know the people or it's pretty easy, pretty accessible to see what folks have done, it's more likely that they think about it. Well, thank you very much for the information. Heck yeah, yeah. Glad, glad to talk to you guys. Yeah. And uh, it's an exciting. It's I mean, fun. I think we all probably knew most of the threads of it, but it's always nice to have you come and put it into a piece of cloth for us. Absolutely. I am happy to come. Anytime. So potentially this is a three million dollar focus on over three million. On over. Conservation and preservation. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, thanks for your work everybody. Thanks, thanks for, for yours. yours. See ya. You might. I don't know. I'm just. Uh, I just don't believe there are 40 working farms of 100 acres. Well, I, as I say, it's it's one of those things that's kind of hard. Mo most of the farming is done by very few people. Right. That's on my point, on yeah. parcels of land that they may own, and 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 mostly on parcels of land that they don't sure. own. And those the number of those people. Are it's fairly small, yeah. and then you have the people who own farms and and they do they do their farming on the side. Mm -hmm. In other words, they all have full time jobs. Yep. Yeah, Fred Leg is a good sure. example, or Dale Amstead. Absolutely, they're farmers. They consider themselves farmers, but they have full time jobs off the farm, and the mm -hmm. amount of acres that they have under crop wouldn't be enough to feed a family. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it depends a little bit on what you consider to be a farm. Absolutely. Okay, well let's move along and see if we can get through most of this meeting. Uh, um, briefly correspondence, uh, I think I'll do this from, we got through this faster. I'm not sure we need to list them all verbally. Okay. We don't have got the highlights. All right. Well, the highlights. <laughs> Um, the ones that were out of the ordinary. The <laughs> yeah. Green County Health meeting notice and the Health Commissioner's reports always interesting. Uh, how to have Sleep Co Association County memos. Um, uh, Otarma sent us a, a directory of all officers and association officers. Uh, we've got legislative alerts. Uh, we've got Township Magazine. Uh, well, now I've got to dig out the. Well, I can do that. I'll do that. Draft um, resolution? Yeah. We'll put that under like new business email from uh, Ohio EPA about from that notification, the email from Prosecutor DeWine, the email from uh, 
going to say architects about to loose ends, RPC announcements, Ohio Cemetery Association requests, uh, lots of our, and the RPC uh, meeting and agenda and attendance, a um, bunch of stuff back and forth from the geotech guys, the geo, the geo something, Bowser Mortar, about a request from Home Inc. to see the report. Um, this morning there were a flurry, and I mean a flurry of messaging back and forth, uh, probably a dozen anyway, between uh, our attorney in Columbus, Dinsmore, Peter Hahn, is a representative from Ashley Kelly, uh, from USDA, from Dan Montgomery, from MSA, from Mike, I can't seem to think of Mike's last name, who's the state architect who coordinates uh, USDA stuff, all about fine tuning, and I mean down to the finest of, <laughs> finest of little dotting the I's and crossing your T's on the uh, bid proposal package, which is being assembled and again, massaged for us to be able to put it out to the public, which we had hoped to do at this meeting, which, as you can see, we do not have that in front of us. So it now has to go through three more vettings? But yes, it probably does. I made up the numbers. Well, it might be three. It might be 13. I don't know. But anyway, um, that's in process, and everybody <coughs> is committed to getting it done just as quickly as possible. Thank God. Yes. That's what they all say. Yeah. That's what they've said since February. But anyway, those were the those were the correspondences other than the one that I'll pull out in a bit. Any other correspondences from anyone? Don? Nope. All righty. Mm -hmm. So brings us to the fire department report. All righty. Which we apparently have right in front of our right in front of you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> all right. Since the last meeting of the board, we've had forty nine EMS incidents. 14 fire Holy incidents. Moly. It was three weeks, right? It was three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Four, uh, we've done fire, that. Four fire safety inspections an issue. Four, uh, eight fire code permits. Um, you have resolution 2018 dash. 19 and 20. 19. Uh, 19 is the first group. one, yeah. For the appointment of volunteer personnel. Mm -hmm. oh, good. So these are new. These are new volunteers. And did these all come from? The latest formal outreach, uh, or were some of them just three of them did? Okay. Um, so we've got Andrew Gord, Marcus Perry, Forrest Weiss, and Doug Wiltsey. Um, Marcus and Forrest are both already firefighters, they're both in the EMT class. What do you mean, fire somewhere else? Uh, they, they went to Sinclair and oh, got okay. trained and they're ready to start doing stuff. Uh, Doug is taking Firefighter uh, 1 and 2 as well as EMT over the summer, uh, courtesy of the Veterans Administration. Um, and Andrew is just a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, of those four, a whopping zero come from Miami Township, Yellow Springs, or Clifton. Uh, Andrew lives at Red Patterson, he's in the Air Force. Marcus lives in Trotwood, Forrest lives in Centerville, and Doug lives in Beaver Creek. So, um, but anyway, so I recommend that uh, approve the resolution to uh, appoint these guys. Uh, I would move adoption of this resolution. I'll no second. Any further discussion regarding resolution 2018-19? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Thank you. Now, apparently we have resolution 2018-20 also. Jumping ahead, but okay. <laughs> Pardon? You're jumping ahead. Oh, I am? I'm sorry. No, that's okay. We can go down. 2018-20 is a resolution to establish a work period for the three full-time guys who will be going to the 2448, mm -hmm. uh, consistent with the Fair Labor Standards Act. Um, this establishes a 212-hour 28 day work period, which means that in order for them to earn overtime, they have to work more than 212 hours in the 28 day work period, um, which is completely consistent with every other fire department in the area and is uh, legal under Section 7K of the Fair Labor Standards Act. Mm -hmm. um, the reason being, of course, 
they're gonna work a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. Doing a twenty four hours shift, you know, for quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> but we have to have it official uh -huh. so that that so that they can get their overtime or not, depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously if they were doing a forty hour week threshold as overtime, we'd be spending a small fortune right. in overtime. So yeah. Uh, they're going to average anywhere from 56 to 96 hours a week, mm -hmm. depending on the amount of week. No, pay per Okay. Pay per um, So, we can get pretty high. Mm -hmm. if we were doing it every time a week. So, so that's 2018-20. Uh, that was put together with the assistance of uh, Beaver Creek Township's been extremely helpful yep. uh, for us, to me, yep. uh, both our HR manager and um, one of the deputy chiefs who handles all their labor stuff. Mm -hmm. So he's, uh, they've, both, they've both been fantastic in answering questions and helping me navigate. And they gave me someone to refer Margaret to to help her with the nuances of when overtime kicks in and how to pay these guys. And all that stuff. You didn't feel the need to run through the prosecutor? Uh, no. I, I'm going to draft, I've got to draft a policy that I was going to run through her just to make sure. Mm -hmm. But it's all based on policies that Beaver Creek and the Township have mm -hmm. and their collective bargaining agreements, which have all been vetted by mm -hmm. a million different terms. Um, we will not have a collective bargaining agreement, obviously, because we won't have a bargaining agreement mm -hmm. because we're too small of a township. So, that's, um, <coughs> so that's, that's that resolution. They start on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Nate starts, he's the first. It's Nate, then Jason, then Joe. Fourth until uh, a week or so, <laughs> probably forever, unfortunately. But um, so yeah, they're all at least two or three of them excited to start. The other one's on vacation, so I'm sure he'll be really excited to get back. So, um, all right, I would entertain a motion for the adoption of resolution 2018-20. Uh, I will move it, but I need to ask some questions. Okay, so I'm, I move. Yeah. All right, <laughs> um, doors open. I I don't. I, I I'm. I expect to vote for this, but I need to understand it more thoroughly. Okay. I'm clueless. I know I understand what a 40-hour week is, and and going over it means overtime. Mm -hmm. And because we're having these longer shifts and whatever, I know that something is different. Mm -hmm. Could you give me some kind of Possibly. What's the scenario of how many hours somebody is going to be working under our new uh, Hold that up. Now, will he come back? <laughs> no, I he started his car and left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, for instance, Nate. So in the first pay period, starting the 12th, he'll work one, two, three, Five. He'll have five 24 hour shifts, mm -hmm. which is 120 hours. Thank you. 120 hours. Um, the following pay period, though, he will have one, two, three, four shifts uh, for 96 hours because he's, we put in a system that's called, um, it's a 2448, with what's called Kelly. So every seven shift that they will work is a day off. It's a day off without pay, so we save money. Uh, I mean, we'll have to have a part-time guy to cover the shift, but they get paid a lot less. So 120 plus 96 mm. is 216. So you get four hours. You'll get four hours of overtime then first. Okay. And so that's that's how it works out. Um, and there's other little nuances. Um, which I mean, I'll have a policy because they have things like Zinga Township, who we're much closer to in size, they only have three guys doing this rotation. They have a union because the township population is 6,700 or something. There's a 5,000 population cutoff hmm. in the ORC somewhere. Um, and it's only since we're a township fire department, it only looks at the unincorporated township population, not our combined mm -hmm. population, which I still think. Oh, right, close. Can still be um, but Zinga, uh, Zinga Township has a system similar to what we'll be doing. You know, if if your shift falls on a holiday, you work a holiday. Mm -hmm. You get time and a half, 
you know, um, like we all would. Well, I don't know, but, um, Beaver Creek, their union has a system that even if you don't work the holiday, you're still getting paid for it, which is a nice. pretty nice gig. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, we're scaling more towards the intention <laughs> on that one. So. There's a couple little things, a lot of things we don't have to worry about since we're not going to have a bargaining unit. Mm -hmm. um, and we already have policies in place that cover things like grievances and, you know, union, but mm -hmm. you know, people can't go the world and that kind of stuff. Um, so, I mean, that's one of the beauties of being a, what, 1,100 person township, mm -hmm. is that we're small enough that we're exempt from so much of that. Mm -hmm. So, it yeah. makes our lives a lot easier. At least my life is a lot easier. <laughs> How is it the gist of this, just that? A lot of labor laws are based on if you work more than eight hours a day or ten right. hours a day, you get overtime. Yep. And as soon as you start doing shifts that are something other than eight-hour shifts, you yep. have to look at it with a different perspective. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Um, the FLSA contains two exemptions to all the standard overtime rules for non-exempt employees, and that's fire and police, mm -hmm. because cops and firefighters work bigger shifts. So, mm -hmm. um, and there's a multiple different options, but the prevailing one used in Ohio is the, uh, is the 228. They need to respond at 1056 Leandra. So that's where this is coming from. And the guys in there are all aware of it. Leandra, email, medical, another issue. Can you have a question for that? Nope. please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, right, let's get back on the right board. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, as you know, we held our first recruiting open house on April 26th. We had six people, which was more than I was, it was hoping. I mean, more than I was hoping for. Actually. Um, three of them we got here. Um, the other three we haven't heard anything back from. I guess we scared them off. Um, we sent over 2,700 pieces of mail out to every address in the township <coughs> and two villages, and we've received only one mobile application. So, um, which, I mean, these guys are great, but the you know problem is going to come up at the end of my last point here, um, that if you don't live in the township, when something big happens, you know, here. So. Right. But yeah. it was a good start. Um, could I say I, I thought it was, I sat in the back, that yeah, was a great presentation, and I was impressed by the two testimonials by the volunteers. Well, they were one of them was volunteers. So, yeah. Uh, that was well done. Oh, good. Thank you. And we had a lot of people who messaged us on Facebook, and, oh, I look at them, look at them, and then they're shut up. So. Um, <coughs> But at least we've got some people coming on, so that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, oh, uh, Jason wanted me to give this to you, Jason Pelletti, full time firefighter. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, he just successfully completed his degree program at Clark State for nursing mm -hmm. to get an RN. Um, and we were able to you know, work with him to flex his schedule here so that he could attend classes and do his clinicals and pick up other shifts and trade with people. Um, so he just wrote a little note to you guys thanking the department of the township for allowing him to do that and being flexible. So he wanted to show that to you guys. He's extremely appreciative. And it's very nice. <laughs> I think he is the, is the first person in his family to so. Nice job, Jason. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, because you signed the check, the roof repairs at Station 82 have been completed. So far, nothing's leaking. And um, the leaking roof caused the ceiling collapse in part of the kitchen. Um, we received notice from the fiscal officer, <laughs> thank you, Margaret, that we've received our grant, BWC grant funds to purchase the second power cop. Uh, that was just today. <coughs> so what was that? Was it twenty-seven thousand? I can't remember. Twenty-six. Twenty-six eight. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have to come up with some money for that um, from the EMS billing. Uh, Alex is contacting the, uh, the sales rep to <coughs> arrange for delivery of the unit and the installation. So then both ambulances will have a nice power cot so that we hopefully will continue to reduce back injuries to be really nice. It's like more than a car. Yeah, it ain't cheap. 
And we figure. Can you get self driving ones? <laughs> it'd be nice <laughs> well, until they kill somebody. Um, someone once told me one of the employees on the company said I mean, the actual cost to build it is about 10000 the rest is whole liability cost, yeah. basically. Uh, and, you know, with that, we have to have them inspected by a certified person every six months. And you don't want to drop someone. That's it's really bad. Uh, and other new money it's, uh, issues Lisa Goldberg, uh, of Minor Township fame, uh, is a member of a group called 100 Women Making a Difference for Green County. Uh, it's basically, uh, oddly, it's a hundred women. <laughs> put in a hundred dollars. Put in a hundred dollars four, four times a year, and then they give it to a charity they all vote on. Lisa has been trying to get us money for the last year or so um, to purchase a Lucas CPR device, uh, and I thought she'd given up, uh, but no, I was wrong. So she <laughs> called me last week to let me know that uh, they voted and they they're giving us ten thousand four hundred dollars. So I think there's a hundred and four women. Well, that's great. Um, so the money will go to the association because it's the 501c3, mm -hmm. and then they'll pool it. We should have it within a month, is what she said. Um, and then we'll make the purchase. We'll write a check for our portion, which is like 3,200 bucks or something, and we'll attempt uh, those people. The association will write a check for their portion to the vendor. So. Well, that's great. Yeah, we haven't been making much progress towards that. No, that no, we were working on power cuts. So, yeah. um, so. Big thanks to Lisa for, for doing that. So. And then last but not least, and uh, don't see the attachment because there's not one, because <laughs> we, we, we ended up with an ambulance call and then I had to go home and make dinner. So. <laughs> but I started one, so I'll finish it up and you'll have it after the fact. But you may have heard, and maybe you haven't, so if you haven't, you're hearing it for the first time now. Today. We actually had two fires uh, in the last um, pay period, uh, pay period, trustee period, um, which is unusual for us. Um, they were both, and then, which is even more unusual, they were both on the same day. <laughs> which is wicked unusual. Um, so they were both on the 28th of April, which is Saturday. It was a beautiful day. Um, it actually was a beautiful day. Um, which means that there was a million people in town and no one in the fire department. Um, so the first one came in about 5.09 p.m. It was on North Stafford Street for Garage on Fire. Um, the, uh, we had two guys working, Ted and Brett. Or here, the uh, so call came in, garage on fire. Uh, our guys responded with two on the attack engine. Should be four, but you go with what you got. Um, because of our dispatch system, it pulled automatic mutual aid. So we had Cedarville, Virginia Township, and Houston on the call as well, which was nice. Um, and J2 was dispatched at 5:09 p.m. They were en route at 5:14 and on the scene at 5:15. So. What was that? Six, six minutes. It was six minutes. Uh, Yellow Springs officer got on scene, said there was fire in the corner, but it's a detached garage. Um, he or she, I'm not sure what she meant that was, um, put it out with a fire, well, darkened it down with a fire extinguisher. Guys got on scene, there was a lot of smoke in the garage, and there was fire burning in the wall, so they you know, put the fire out. Turns out the homeowner was uh, trying to kill some weeds with a torch. And, the wall. <laughs> and I'm not sure if a dollar. I'm now on that one. So I was on that call. Um, I was out of town at Beaver Creek when the call came in. <coughs> Did two people get water moving? Very difficultly, but yes. Uh, they were then joined. Um, we had three more that responded with the uh, rescue. But the rescue didn't respond until. Probably didn't respond at all. So that's not good. Well, it says in our fire report the rescue responded, but according to the dispatch, it didn't do. Something responded. More people showed up, unless they're stacking the. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, Medicated one responded. Medicated two responded. All right. Well, we both had the ambulances, but both ambulances didn't respond until about 18 minutes into the call. So. That's for the second fire. Uh, no, this was still the first fire. So. Oh. Um, Houston uh, responded, and they canceled. Uh, Ted canceled everybody else, so Houston came and helped out. So, they were done. Um, at 5.33, so that was, that was a quick one. Mm -hmm. Then the not quick one. Mm -hmm. um, at uh, Sunday, 11.42 p.m., uh, house on fire on uh, Dayton Yellow Springs Road. Two callers from passerbys. Uh, we had a two-person crew on that night, Brett. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poor Brett. Um, yeah. <laughs> Brett and Julia with the crew. Um, so we had multiple callers saying uh, big flames down along uh, 
Lane. This is at 251 East 8 Millstones Road. Is that the first house or the second one? Down the lane is the first house. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. If it helps, it's the first Andrew house. Roar, used to live there. <laughs> Going back in, in time. Um, Yellow Springs police uh, got out there and arrived on the scene. And I'm not sure what time they were on the scene. I saw their, we saw their dash cam footage as they came down the lane. Half the house was pretty much fully involved. That's a, a thousand square foot house. So it wasn't a whole lot of house going on there. Uh, the engine arrived with Brett and Julia. Um, they noted there were three, multiple cars in the driveway, but no one standing outside, which is typically a sign that someone could be trapped inside. Um, they made attempts to enter, but the fire ceiling roof was collapsing at that point. Um, through the automatic mutual aid system, we had Zia Township, Houston, Cedarville, and Fairborn all responding to the call um, with tank, with primarily with engines and tankers. Um, shortly after they showed up, uh, Greg Beagle, as deputy chief of Zia Township, showed up and took command from Brett. Um, Greg was extremely uh, Complimentary, thank you. That's what uh, for their performance, there's two of them. Uh, <laughs> Brett may never come back again. Oh, no, he was back on Saturday, so he's, he's, he's not shell shocked yet. Um, so they ended up um, basically not being able to make entry, so not knowing. Uh, dispatch at about 2 a.m. was able to hunt down the owner. They ran the plates, the police ran the plates, and then through whatever magic our, sent, our dispatchers can do, found his cell phone. He was out driving Uber. Um, on the south side of Dayton. So he responded. So there was no one home, but he did lose his dog uh, and several chickens. Um, the fire continued to burn through the night. Um, I showed up on scene. I was out in Dayton. Apparently, for Dayton not being in town. So um, I left the party in Dayton and went to my phone and said, oh, crap, we can fire. Uh, <laughs> so I called dispatch, told them I could hear on a scanner on my phone what was going on. I asked him to call uh, Chief Beagle and uh, I could come out there if he said wanted me. Uh, he said sure. So I drove home, changed cars, came down here, got my gear and went to the scene. He gladly turned it over to me and went home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Greg, um, the house was built early 1900, so it's a plaster and lath house, which is a nightmare and a half to fight a fire in because plaster keeps all that heat in and you have to hunt to find a fire. So the house continued to burn. Um, Greg had requested um, a backhoe to come out. Um, so we ended up with Johnny from Village of Yellow Springs who came out with a cute little excavator track hoe thing um, at 2 something in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, which I, I thanked them and I knew to send a letter to the county to thank you for that because he certainly never do that for us. Um, but his police department offered him, so I guess it's their fault. But, uh, so he was able to pull a wall down, gave us access to some of the fire. Um, so mutual aid units were pretty much gone by three, and then we left at four or something? 4.24 in the morning. Um, we ended up with a total of, not including me, five of our firefighters on the scene. Uh, Brent and Julia on the engine, uh, Nick and TJ on the medic, and Zach came with the rescue. Uh, and they were all put to work. I don't know where you put all that equipment. I mean, considering that, that and mutual aid. And yeah. Um, <laughs> One big traffic jam. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them Nobody stayed down in Yale Springs. Yeah. Uh, and then a walk back. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. Exactly. Yeah. They weren't happy about that. But, uh, and then they tried to keep the lane open so the tankers could come back and, mm -hmm. and pump the water in. So I think the only things down there were our engine, the township's engine, and uh, Chief Beagle's car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then the Yale Springs police car that was trapped for about three and a half hours because they couldn't get out. Yeah. So, um, luckily they didn't play solitaire. They got their own laptop in the car. Uh, so we uh, requested the uh, the homeowner came out. You know, we spoke with him in depth. He was obviously a little shell shot. He just bought the house last year at auction. Same, um, same auction. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, luckily he was insured. The homeowner said he's insured. Yeah. Uh, we contacted Red Cross. He came out, responded, and assisted him. Hmm. First, he didn't want them, but we didn't give him a choice. And uh, he was extremely appreciative. He said they, they were really helpful. I mean, said John. Yeah. They were really helpful and gave him a lot of resources. And then his insurance company at State Farm, uh, apparently they're really good. If you don't have State Farm, maybe you want them. Um, we contacted the State Farm Marshal to do a cause and origin investigation. 
their guy called me back at three in the morning and said that they would find money in the race. So it was a loss of life. It was a high dollar. So the uh, state fire marshal's investigator came out on Monday morning. Uh, they met him out there. And, he did his thing. Unfortunately, I mean, the house is a complete total loss. Um, so there's not a whole lot he could do to determine cause. Uh, he was able to kind of determine where the fire started, or where he thinks it started. Um, his theory is it was an electrical short uh, that started the fire. Because the homeowner left at 10 and the fire wasn't responded, uh, reported until 11.42. Um, the house had blown in cellulose insulation, which is basically shredded newspaper. Mm -hmm. Um, which apparently is good for insulation, but is also good for spreading fire. Mm -hmm. um, it's supposed to be a tree. Supposed to be, yeah, boric acid. Right. Um, typically what they do is they blow the stuff in and they spray a coating on top of it so that anything underneath the coating is, is on fire. But how did people see the flames? Were they above the trees? It was pretty, uh, from the, I mean, the, no leaves on the trees. Probably wasn't, wasn't yeah. Oh, they could still see through. Yeah. And they're, I mean, they probably would have seen it anyway because the fire, you, when the police cruiser turned down the lane, that's when its camera first caught it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a hell of a blow. I mean, you could see the flames probably 20, 30 feet in the air and stuff like that. So, um, so we got back, and then because of the construction and the collapse of the walls, there's a lot of heat built in. So the Red Cross got there. They saw fire, so they called us. So we went back out. There's more water on it. Then Channel 7 got out there. Saw so fire, called mm -hmm. us, we went back, reported that the house was on fire 400 times or whatever they said. Uh, then Facebook lit up with uh, armchair quarterbacks uh, who I guess were tired of arguing over the school levy, so decided to argue over why don't we just pass this levy for the fire department when they can't even put a fire in. Oh, I have hunted that person down, I missed and that. they are now in the Glen. <laughs> <laughs> Concrete shoots. <laughs> Paletti and Panudo took care of them, so. Um, that does not mean that. Yeah. The, uh, how, how, on a more serious note, how do you decide when you have a fire where you have to bring in the water with tank trucks, where people are going to go to get the water? Um, we usually look for the closest available source. Uh, so they do you show, like have a map showing bodies of water as well as fire hydrants? Or? Yeah, we try and go for fire hydrants whenever possible because it's easier to get the water out of fire So everybody hydrant. would have just been coming to the edge of Yellow Springs. Yep, they shove it on the Dayton Street. It's a big main. Mm -hmm. um, and we always notify the police department because it's yes. Yellow Springs and all the heck breaks loose. And people start calling the police department because they're doing their whites at 4 in the morning. And <laughs> something happens. So, uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's what we try and avoid getting water from static sources just because okay. it's... It's labor intensive, and, and honestly, we don't have any static sources in the township. No, there aren't very many anyway. That are yeah. deep that we could draft from because you need at least ten feet. Oh, okay. um, and they ain't no near. I think Ellis Ponds are deepest, and it's like what two and a half feet deep or something. Like that. So, other than swimming pools, but we try not to crash through someone's gate or fence and steal their swimming pool. So, uh, so luckily, it was close enough to town that they were able to shuttle mm -hmm. uh, back and forth. We ended up with Cedarville's tanker, Houston's tanker, Fairborn's tanker, and Zion Township's tanker. So, we And I met with the homeowner several times. You know, he's very appreciative for what we did. We were able to save some of his stuff, which we were happy for. Luckily, as I said, he's insured. Mm -hmm. uh, if all goes for the plan, plan yeah. to rebuild. Well, I understand he plans to rebuild. Yep. Um, and the investigation is still technically open. They keep it open for three weeks mm -hmm. uh, to see if their insurance company wants. Sometimes the insurance company will do, the, will do an investigation, and they have a lot more resources for a fire of that magnitude than the state does. The state isn't going to commit a lot of money to a non-fatal fire that had a, well, the house was valued at $58,000. Yeah. So, so, but the investigator was out there, we were out there with him for four and a half hours, so. Oh, so he tried not Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, he, yeah, the guy, he's worked there for 18 years and he's, you know, he likes to come up with something. Um, so he put Nate and Dakota to work there, <laughs> sifting through. <laughs> embers and everything and finding stuff. And it was fascinating for for me and him to, you know, for him to look at burn patterns and how the walls collapsed and figure stuff out, which was really cool. So, so anyway, but on both fires we were certainly hampered by the lack of people. You know, I think for the Saturday Night Fire we had everybody who lived in town who was available. Um, you know, Joe was in Florida on vacation and Jason was in Indianapolis, so that was pretty, you know, yeah, pretty much everybody. So. 
That's why it's nice, you know, we'll, I'll certainly take volunteers from wherever we can get them, um, especially if they're going to be certified on their own dollar, which is nice. Mm -hmm. But uh, the more people from the community who can volunteer, the better. But, uh, so we've got, as I said, one application. Uh, she's out of town until the three weeks going to stop or something like that. So we can't interview her until she gets back. But. but that's it. That's our fire department report. Anything else for Colin? Just to say thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's move along. <laughs> Cemetery. Well, we've been a little busy the last few weeks, three weeks. We had three ashes or four ashes in the land forest, and a natural burial was formed. Mm -hmm. So I went pretty well. Good. Mm -hmm. Everything's smooth. Mm -hmm. And we've had three ashes in the Clifton Cemetery since our last. We got two pending over there. I know one is coming up. I'm thinking it's the weekend of Memorial Day on Saturday. I think. The other one I never heard of a date on that. They will call. But that's what's up over there. Bird burials. I'm trying to get my bases in. That's a lot of business in the class. Oh, it's been busy. I'm trying to do everything else too. So. Yeah, we had the silver. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. so, so it was kind of slow for a minute. Yeah, it was. Then it comes off mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm going to try to get my bases in. Hopefully this week, by early next week at the base. Getting back. Mm -hmm. We got a lot to do. Yeah. And we'll be coming up here in a couple more weeks for a little more of it. Yeah, well, too bad. I wouldn't well, I mean, I'd like to get as soon as, right. Yeah. It is as place. soon as it rains, they're going to shoot up. Well, they're starting to shoot, yeah. but, you know, they're good for a couple of weeks. I'd like yeah. to get soon as cemetery more. Yeah. Well, we've got some potholes that you've noticed showing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, one spot on Bright Park Road, which you talked about, needs to be capped. Let's, let's stick with cemeteries just as long as we're the roads. Well, I've noticed it. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Roger planned on mowing uh, uh, yeah, Glen Forest. Yeah. I certainly hope he's not going to do the same thing he did last year and you know yeah, mow it was. ten days before Memorial Day and then it was this yeah. high on Memorial Day. Yeah. Um, he seemed to be able to be in the Catholic Cemetery four times a week, but he didn't see out there. Huh? He's just out there last week. Yeah. Right. They have barrels Saturday. Oh, the morning. That missing fence piece uh, is planning to go up on the corner. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, the same people who put up our all right. the fences and everything, they're making new, a new plot for that. Um, <coughs> so we'll get that. We'll be up pretty soon. Huh? We'll be up pretty soon. Pretty soon, yeah. Good. I think next week or 10 days. Good. Um, Canaan looks good. Um, I noticed they've they been down and painted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. looks real nice. He was down there, uh, Mike Strader was down there, I think the day we were doing last Tuesday. He was down there up there to Kayla looking around, I don't know what I didn't talk to him mm -hmm. I was hoping that that's what he was planning on doing. That's a pretty good little operation. But yeah. I haven't got I haven't gotten the I'll get the details on all that. There's pictures. <laughs> there's pictures. There's pictures. Anything else for cemetery business? No? Nope. Uh, road business. Okay, we got a spot on Brown Park Road. We can do ourselves. Where? Right at the curve where the campground is. As you come off the state's end and come on to ours, it's That was ours? Yeah, yeah that is rough. You sure? I, yeah, last year I, I talked to the state man and tried to get him to go up <laughs> to the, because they turn around up there. Said, no, he wouldn't do it. Uh, I don't know if that was still state. I don't think that was yeah, there. I said, your guys turn around here, they sleep right there. I said, you know, part of this could be they're tearing it up. But we're right here, you know, but. And I was not. Nice. I was very nice. I was very nice. Garage, whatever director. So anyway, I was going to. All right, well, as long as you're asking for favors, maybe they'd 
throw a little, or maybe Pop Guy can come out and do some wedging. I don't know. Does he wedge anymore? I don't know. Yeah. I'd have to call him But uh, there's a couple places on Houston Road. There. That one place on Houston Road had be. the crown right yeah. where I think that's the only thing I can do with that because Cole Patrick was there. No. Uh, so that was the, that's the other place. There's, we got some equipped in, which is on plan for anyway, on uh, Jackson and Ward. A wedging on the edge, mm -hmm. so then want to put the spot on Bryant Park, which is probably going to take about 16, 12 to 16 minutes. And then we can throw some out on Houston, which needs to be right there. That's what I mean. That's what I'm going to do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I some 16 tons of on Did we put Clifton on the chips hill for a couple mm -hmm. roads? They're on for Water Street and Jackson from oh, okay. all the way up from 343 down to the middle, around the curve. Oh. That, and and uh, Clay from 343 down to that intersection. So could we theoretically add to that? For Clinton? No, for more chip sealing. Just swimming pool road really needs to be chip sealed. Really. We chipped that in 2013. Well, it's I know. really it's got, neat. It's got some spots. Okay, so right it should on be the wedge. edge of where, you know, with all the cracking in the alligators and then some broken up parts and this, you know, if we don't throw something out there. Some of that cracking will come back together with the warmer weather, but some of it's falling apart. You need some wedging too on that because of the. I don't know, you can be tension. Well, could we add it to the program, is what I'm saying? I can probably call and see if we can get some pool for them. Do you want the whole thing? Mm -hmm. I think so. What do you think? I haven't been on it since I'm not with you. Well, so I'll you, defer to you. You could, uh, you could go check it out, or um, no. I mean, they wouldn't do it for a while, but I'm just thinking, you know, it really, it really stuck out at me. We could uh, probably get it on the, on the list. But it sounds to me like if the last ship and seal only lasted. Short about time, but you need some I think it was better prep time. before your chip seal. It again. needs some wet. Yeah. It really does, and some it's possible to do work before a cold patch on. Let me call Luke and talk to him. to get on the list. All right. I did see this the work on Tobias Road, which I hadn't fully understood before, but looks good. The neighbor of the road itself. Doing my ears on how bad a job I've done, and it will never work. It worked well, we'll find it worked real well. So, a little bit of water still running down the road was actually coming down the road and not out of that area. So we, we, we settled the problem down quite a bit. You got and then built that up when I dressed that up, I left it high so the water, more water should flow well, back. Looks like it. Yeah, but Glenn Drive straight and wave on it. Except for a little dirt spread out under a hole down there. Where they put it by the shed there. Yeah. The banks. You, know, you did. Or going to. It's there. I haven't oh. spread it yet. The water just run out of that bank when I pulled that vegetation off there. It's yeah. Just it's saturated. Ground saturated. <coughs> it's draining. It always was draining, but it's draining a little better now. So Do we ever tell the property owner on Carroll Drive that it's not our our driveway? No, I'm working for it. All right. Well, 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 we don't, don't hear from them all week from market to us then. Okay. Um, it needs replaced. It's collapsed. You can change oil in that truck here one of these days? Mm -hmm. um, free time I have it. She's good there no time. <laughs> okay. I'll take care of it now. Um, did you ever ask Mike to put the gravel down? Mm -hmm. We went down up the and we looked at it. So. Yeah. He's going to do it. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, yeah, I know it, it's not throwing good money after bad, but it might as well be. But you know, re really, I'll throw some more on your apron to you know, keep shot. it dry. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, is the flag in Clifton going back up? Mm -hmm. The more of it. How was that win? Mm -hmm. uh, the caps on the mill sign look nice. Oh, good. I like those. They're not lit. <laughs> they do reflect. Everybody likes <laughs> those daylight. shiny copper or brass until about six months later and then it's all dark, but whatever. Well, it does kind of catch your eye. 
Yeah. Looks quality. Quite. Um, when sometime when you have nothing to do and you a road tour, uh, look at those stop ahead signs that the on the South River. Yeah. Road? Yeah. They're leaning. Leaning out. Yes. Yeah, I, I know about them. Okay. I fixed them twice. Now I'm going to drive a post at an angle. The wind, wind does this. Let me just be Oh, it just keeps loosening them mm -hmm. in the ground? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to drive a post along it and bolt it and hope it out. It worked on Kyle, right? So hopefully it'll work there. Anything else for the roads? Uh, this cloth, sir? I have nothing. Nothing? Well, that's so, I have nothing to tell you. <laughs> not at all. That's different than not having anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <That's fine. laughs> I missed your report. Um, I have that with you. <laughs> what outstanding bills do we have for the new fire station that represent the 139 that's in the that's in the capital fund? I mean, I thought we were only getting reimbursed for what we have, have bills that are outstanding. We we got reimbursed. The, the, the what's in the capital in that line item right now is money that we had already spent and you know and it was reimbursed for. And so what? And so what's your question? Well, we moved the large amount of money out of that back into the general fund. Right. And then that left what's in there now, mm -hmm. right? The one hundred thirty-nine thousand. Uh. Well. So what you mean, or your, your question is how come we still have money in there if we... We have 149.6. Right, if it all represents well, the things we've do, already... Who do we owe the 149.6 to? I don't think we owe it to anybody. Well, I thought we had to submit invoices to Cindy Cameron, and then they would okie-dokie them, and then they'd give us the money to pay those invoices, and they put the money in the account. Which is yeah, the I hear what you're saying. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm not. I'm kind of confused right now. But the, I don't. I don't really have the answer. Okay. That's kind of confusing. All right. Well, maybe next. You know, next meeting or something. Yeah, well, yeah. It's not like we have money that they wouldn't give us money that unless we, you know. That's right. Do they give the, we well, they give you the so money based on an invoice rather than a payment? No. It, you have no the invoice. I had to show that we um, show them the invoice, show them the check that we wrote, okay. and show that the check cleared. So. Um, so that it's impossible to get money that you haven't already spent. No, but no, no, you can get it. You can that you've already spent it, but it has yeah. to, but it has to have cleared the bank as well. Right. And show that that whoever we wrote the check to, cash the check. Um, yeah, why do we have that extra money in there? I, you know, I, I'm drawing a blank right now. I'm sure there's an easy answer, but yeah, I will. I will. Maybe it's just an easy answer. I just out. and the only other thing I had was I had asked uh, at some time in the past, could you get a thumb drive together with the last year's minutes on it so I can put them in the Yeah, statement? except you know, I, you know, I'm old, and so tr there's uh, uh, can I can't get it on? Can you get on one mm -hmm. thumb drive? Yeah. Okay, good. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I I have all the thumb drives. Little, I have them little. all. And, okay. Yeah. All right. Either you do it or I'll do it. What, whichever. I, I'll be happy to if you don't want to. Or, no. Yeah. No. I, I I I started that project oh. and the, and basically all of them for 2017 are except for like two minutes are on one stick. So. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. All right. It's, it's not lost. Yeah. Richard, what are you doing? <laughs> Vacation. Hanging out, <laughs> hanging out with friends. Okay. I have four permits to tell you about. Um, no, you have three because we know about well, one. Well, you know, right, you know about one of them. Which, yeah, I, I want to thank you for taking care of that because I was trying to deal with these people who kept calling me and then every time I call them back, all I get is a message. You know, that we're not here right now, but would you, and so I call them back and say, would you tell me when to call you? Okay, well, let's, let's, let's don't do it by phone. Let's do it by email. I don't get any emails from them. So, apparently they came in, and you handled it, and thank you very much. Or Colin. Colin. And then Chris. Oh, uh, what, whatever. There was a permit issue. Yeah. I have the, the paperwork here. Um, 
Okay, so uh, out on, on Houston Road, there's going to be a new residence, one of the lots that was created by the auction, so it's not all conservation mm -hmm. out there. Um, uh, a, a small accessory structure on uh, US 68, north of town, and today out on Yellow Springs Fairfield, a small accessory structure. So the, the residence on the former Arnovitz property is the, is the significant item mm -hmm. as far as that goes. Um, OTA had another conference. Um, I. Part of my scheduling was based on the fact that every topic they had at the conference had absolutely nothing to do with what's happening here in Miami Township, and so I couldn't justify even mm -hmm. even going. Um, I have n not received minutes yet from the zoning commission meeting for their April their April meeting. I was not able to attend that meeting. Their agenda is looking at revisions to other sections of the code um, and quite possibly the, the last discussion that was going on was to eliminate some sections for which we have nothing zoned. For example, residents, you know, <coughs> 2R or whatever. Because mm -hmm. we don't, and we don't particularly, we don't have any places that we uh, are zoned that way. We don't have any particular demand for, for duplexes or multiple, mm -hmm. and they all require water and sewer right. anyway right. to do. No, I've so, said that forever, why the hell does yeah, why, why, So anyway, so, so looking for some low fruit mm -hmm. to clean up in the code, as well as looking at other sections and trying to decide whether we, A, look at them, and do we need them, and if B, if we do, do they need to be simplified or modernized, mm -hmm. or whatever. And so that's the process that they're embarking on. Um, but as I say, I don't know exactly what took place in April. I'll let you know the next time I see you. And that's really all I have on the on the zoning front. Okay. It um, has been pretty quiet this year. Yeah, so far, years now. Yeah, oh, it, it can change at any time. Um, we need to officially uh, adopt, deny, or modify the recommendations that we had the public hearing for last last meeting. And um, it's that we're not going to have enough a thirty time. day lag. We had thirty days from our last meeting to make that uh, make that but decision or whatever. Then after the public hearing, isn't there supposed to be? That's yeah, thirty days. But we're not going to have thirty days from the public hearing to another meeting of the board. So this is basically the meeting unless we did a special. Or if we did, we a year there, but. Can I help you make your decision? I mean, I don't know what, what the issues are. No. Well, Richard, help you make a decision? <laughs> I have not. I don't have any issues with the proposal, and no one brought up any issues other than the difference in some of the definitions between what people thought was current state Remember the conversation where there was mm -hmm. the variation in the wording? Of, well, we're all provided by regional planning. The, the, big, the biggest, you know, and we don't need to go over that. The, the biggest, I don't know if you read the threads of emails that went back and forth between <clears throat> Mark Kaibel, Al Kuzma, no, I myself, and back and forth. And we had this certificate of occupancy email question. I did. And he then. Mark uh, approached, sent a message to Al about you know how that works, and, they, and Al gave some long, <laughs> convoluted answer, and basically wants to set up a meeting between himself and the prosecuting attorney's office and uh, all the board of trustees and the planning commission and or the zoning commission, <laughs> probably the BZA also, and. <laughs> So anyway, and all the volunteers on the fire department. If that's what if that's what we want, if that's what we want for a very clear definition, of it. and I said, I don't think I want that clear definition. Does <laughs> <laughs> that be that clear? Yeah. So I would entertain a motion to adopt the uh, changes as recommended by the zoning commission. I will so move. There's a motion, and uh, I'll second it. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Meacher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. 
Okay, and Donald, since you have the electronic files, how about cut and paste them onto the zoning resolution? Okay, there we go. Homework. Uh, zoning. Anything else for zoning? Uh, we are interviewing a new applicant for regional planning in uh, executive director's position. This is the fifth applicant that we've um, this is county? County, yeah. This yeah. is the fifth applicant that we've uh, interviewed and seems like a pretty good fit and hopefully uh, we'll be able to make an offer to him uh, in the near future. Does that mean that the first four were not qualified? Uh, the first four, the first th three of the four were qualified. Offers were made to two of the three. Um, one turned it down, uh, one said it really wasn't a good fit, and the third one uh, took himself out of contention because his wife developed stage 4 breast cancer and oh. decided that he didn't want to make a substantial change at the time. So this is the... So it's been, it's been more a matter of, of negotiating a, a salary than it has been mm -hmm. finding a qualified... Uh, yeah, in, 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 uh, in at least one of those, yeah. Um, okay, so... Do, do, do. Let's go to new business, which would be, I guess I've got three quick items. One, I had another meeting with the Luca people on the census, and I have a spreadsheet that I haven't looked at yet of what we have to, uh, what we have to uh, coordinate the information that the census people have uh, with, not coordinate, but check. Discrepancies, whether uh, addresses that are not matching uh, what Green County has and what it. So we have till the 25th to do that, and I'll take a look at it, and hopefully it's not to be a big deal. I had a quick meeting with uh, Mike Harding last week uh, about redesigning uh, my township.net website. Um, he has uh, uh, great plans to make it more user friendly, so then we can easily put things like that code change on there or your bio you can put that on there when you get that in your picture when you get that anything you want to do and change your picture as often as you feel is necessary that's right <laughs> so he's putting a, a, a quick proposal together he says it's not going to cost that much money It'd be like a thousand dollars to make the change uh be great. In, in website terms that's <coughs> so i'm looking forward to seeing what he's got there um, perhaps could part of that that Upgrade if, it, if all this is so simple would be for him to spend an hour or two or whatever would be appropriate with each of us who might have a responsibility to up, upgrade. He, he up. made that he made that offer. Okay, uh, for, yeah, as part of this. So, you know, for example, if there's a change to the zoning code, I'd be happy to do that. As you know, or or <laughs> if. Easy you know, getting getting or getting information on there, like getting the comprehensive plan on, or yeah, we, whatever else. We have to. We'll have to explore that and, and and see what the the pros and cons are of having how many hands yeah well, available to you know. Make I, think, you know I, I'll you know we'll make a change to something like our fee schedule or to the form for the for, for applying for a zoning permit or whatever. Yeah, and it'd be nice to keep those current on yeah. the website. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's, that's part well, of all I'm, of this. I'm happy to, to step forward uh, for some part of that. Okay. Well, everyone will be certainly involved with that. Uh, you know, as you can well imagine, unless we had a special meeting, I couldn't have an exploratory conversation with him and yeah. anybody else. You know, unless we made a big deal about it, I said, I'll, you know, we'll chat about it and then see what he's got, bring it to the board, the board's interested, then we'll have special meetings or invite him to a, a meeting to talk about it or, or move along. But, it, you know, if nothing came of it, it wasn't worth it. Uh, last item was I have a draft resolution, uh, which is, where, 21? Yes. Okay, just a this, is the, uh, this is a resolution for the support of the Yellow Springs Clifton Connector. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Basic history being that for six months or so, a uh, group of uh, organizations, uh, not really individuals, 
uh, including the village of Clifton, the village of Yellow Springs, Miami Township, Ohio Department of Natural Resources, Ohio Department of Transportation. Um, who knows? Who else? Uh, have all been involved in a project of trying to put together a, um, a, a plan to get bicycles from Yellow Springs to Clifton. There's a lot of enthusiasm, there's a lot of uh, willingness to work on this project. Um, a firm root has not really been settled yet, but there's high hopes that they can find one. And they're in the process, and have been in the process, of raise, raising money for two purposes. One for a, uh, a very preliminary engineering study of, uh, of what it would take to get from here to there. Not where it would be, but what it would take to do it. You know, the type of services, the width you need, the, you know, maybe right away acquisitions, you know, all those sorts of things, and then uh, potentially raise some money for uh, a, a matching uh, a matching portion for a grant from uh, Rails to Trails and National Biking People, and you know, all these <laughs> all these funds that are available. People in spandex. Yeah, all, that's the one I was trying to think of. The hundred. Women making a difference. They might like the ride, <laughs> you know, from here to Clifton. Talk to uh, Lisa. Yeah. So, and um, various organizations have have already committed money, actually not just promised it, but have spent the money. And I may not have it exactly right, but I know the village of Clifton has committed $5,000. The village of Yellow Springs has, has, has thrown in $10,000. Uh, community resource, our community foundation has put in a certain amount of money, and I'm not going to say exactly how much because I'm not positive. The state of Ohio, I don't believe has written the check, but has committed to to spending some money. Um, uh, mm. Representative Rick Prowlis is very interested uh, in the project, and he has found money somewhere in the state budget to, to throw in with it. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not zillions of dollars, but it's a contribution, so it's all there. Um, this is a resolution that uh, mimics basically the resolution from uh, somewhere in Green County uh, that I stole. I didn't steal it. I, I borrowed it and, um, and put it in our. But I'm not sure which political subdivision that. Oh, that's the Bill G. Ellis Springs. I'm sorry. That is the Bill G. Ellis Springs. All right, camera. Bill G. Ellis Springs. I did give them credit. Uh, and, and it includes a uh, commitment from us for a, uh, an amount of $5,000 into the project. And that would come from? That would come from our Happy General Fund. Remind me of our current balance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You will never Current balance is $190,482. Um, and our, our yearly our yearly expenses out of general fund generally runs around $130,000. So we're we're a bit on the we do have a margin on the on the good side. We're on a good side for being in June. I don't know, we're on a good side of a lot of those funds, which is nice. So anyway. Uh, Chris, is the money now for for preliminary studies, or is this just in the pot to be used as as the as the, uh, the whole project progresses? Yes, to help fund preliminary. a preliminary engineering study is what the wording says. Mm -hmm. And once that gets done, if there's you know uh, when there's money left over, what money's mm -hmm. left over, then is used to for this matching portion. Yeah. Uh, would you like to act on this? I would. I would this? entertain a motion to. I. To. Uh, I. Support the, the adoption of this resolution. Okay. Is there a motion to move? I will second the motion. Is there any further discussion regarding that? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Meacher. Yes. So at some time we'll um, we'll, we'll draft a check, and I'll forward oh. it to the village treasurer who are holding the money uh, mm -hmm. for the project, dispersing it, holding it. Ha has has anybody 
imagined a possible route yet? It's uh, working. They're being worked on. Okay. Did anybody say it was going to be easy, Richard? No. no. Oh. <laughs> Well, oh, it's easy to do a little bit here and there. Well, that's part of how. I mean, that, the goal is to not have it be not overlap with any roadway, any right. automobile. Yeah, it really cannot. They can't change 343. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know the, yeah, the okay. overall the basic yeah. problem. All right, there we go. Then, 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 I, then, you know. This this has been a subject for as long as I can remember. Yeah. Oh, sure. Me too. But you know, my golly. The, People I, want to get out there and work on it? I remember Jonathan Brown said we should have a tunnel through Yellow Springs instead of a bypass. I, I think an overhead bike way is the they, way to go to Clifton. It could be like a New York City uh, an L, an L, L, yeah. like the High Line. It would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Is there any further business coming before the board this evening? <laughs> no, there's no, you're asking for old business, right? Oh, any old business? Hearing none. <laughs> any further business coming before the board? Hearing that, I entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Adjourn by acclamation. So yeah. Okay, I am inserting in this. Yeah. I need your the appropriate place. I need your technical. Uh,